The session is about uh, automating deployment of Nginx uh, using Azure DevOps. So I work for Microsoft, and uh, uh, this is why I'm here in the conference. I had the opportunity to use the project, uh, and I am here to give you an idea of what we could do with automation. Uh, time of this project was made. Uh, there was no controller, so I think the DevOps view and uh, how you can automate it differently is a good opportunity. But now you also have controller to push configuration. So a little about me. So I'm Alex, and I work in Microsoft since uh, 2013 in the Azure uh, on Azure Cloud uh, deal mainly because uh, I do a customer-facing role. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Can everybody hear at the end? Okay, good. So I'm an, uh, in a customer facing role. So um, I, I meet customer every day. And formerly, uh, I was working at Dell. It's more on uh, on premises technology with virtualization, VMware, Hyper V. And uh, also, we try to deliver the Dell portfolio around storage, networking. So we see even in the cloud today that uh, networking skill is still a thing to have when you talk about connectivity. So I'll be happy to answer any question if you have today after the session and uh, using the email. So uh, I'm not a fan of, of Twitter yet, so email should be <laughs> the best thing if you want to reach out to me. OK, so the session learning objectives. Uh, today I'm going to showcase how you will deploy Nginx uh, using Azure DevOps. Yeah, thank you. So Azure DevOps is Microsoft stuff. I will show you uh, some part of that. There are many other automation tools, but this is one of the grids we have here at Microsoft. Uh, I talk about multiple environment and region because as soon as you build your automation, you can say, hey, I want to have it in West US. This is the, the case we have today. And I want it to be in France as well. And I need to have dev environment. I need to have a production environment. So there are many ways to configure the deployment, but if you do, I, I started with some PowerShell scripts. And if you make the good viable stuff with the environment and the region, then you can play it uh, on all uh, the region you want. Here, the Nginx setup will be as a reverse proxy, uh, like an API gateway. So this is what I want to, to show you today. Uh, and what about you? So how many nodes already as your DevOps or use it? Yes, quite a few hands. Uh, I think you need to be aware about some Azure Cloud stuff, like ARM template. I know that you are one of the users of the ARM template. Everybody knows that the ARM template, no? OK. Sometimes you can use also Terraform in a multi-cloud uh, provider uh, area. I will use Ansible to customize the inside the virtual machine, as well as the custom script extension, which is the piece that connects the Azure infrastructure part to the internal of the virtual machine. We work quite as, as a same way as Amazon, I would say. And log analytics, perhaps nobody use it. Uh, I would say it's like a, a, a hole where you put all your logs. And uh, we have got that at, uh, in Azure. And we use it to gather all the logs we have on all Nginx nodes. And it's pushed directly into the log analytics. So this way, you can make your queries. Uh, and with Power BI and all kind of tools, you can uh, aggregate data and try to have the average request time and stuff like that. Uh, this is for log analytic. And Nginx, I think this configuration I will show is quite simple. It's reverse proxy to third party APIs. So why did I choose this, uh, uh, this demonstration. So I was part of the delivery of uh, a, a huge deal for Microsoft, which was the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance Connected Vehicle Project. So they came to us two years ago and saying, I need to have some connected services in my car. So the Renault Clio that you can buy today, the Nissan Leaf, if you search destination and say, I want to see the, the arrival uh, street, uh, you can press the button and you will have a picture coming from Google. Or you can have a, you can search for a pizzeria next to the arrival, and it will show you an address. So this is based on TomTom -tom services. So uh, 
In this project, we use a bunch of standard services, which is called Microsoft Connected Vehicle Platform. So when you build a car, you can say, I want to send telemetry car data to the cloud. Then there is a specific connector with specific protocol like MQTT, stuff like that. And part of that, you can also uh, bridge some configuration. And we decided to use Nginx there as a third party API provider for the car. Why Nginx? Because it was a high scale uh, software, I would say. And we also need to have uh, many different configuration type. Uh, on the front, you need mutual authentication. On the back end, it can be uh, insert an API key. And it can be also connect using client certificate. There was a great session just before on uh, mutual TLS. Uh, so this was not available in Azure two years ago. I think it's not yet ready. So Nginx is very good at giving uh, uh, multiple possibility to interface and connect. So this is the architecture we have today uh, in our sample. So I put some uh, elements from Azure. Uh, the first one is the, the car in the middle will be simulated by my computer using Postman or Insomnia is also a good one. Uh, Azure DNS, I bought one domain name for the conference, which is my API, my API gateway that site. And the, in the sample, we will be able to query uh, the Google Street View to retrieve an image or the Azure Maps POI. Uh, which will give you the address of a photographer in this example. Uh, we will target the public IP, uh, which is presented by Azure, and it's attached to a load balancer. So today it's uh, an Azure load balancer, classic one. And behind of that, you have the Nginx uh, virtual machine scale set. So do people in the room use uh, VMSS and scale sets in Azure? Or is there any, yeah? So you take one image, or a Red Hat distribution from the cloud, uh, classic one. And then you can deploy one up to 1,000 virtual machine. And it's all managed as a one uh, cluster, I would say, or one, uh, one package. And Azure uh, handles all the NIT rules, the load balancing rule behind the scene. So if you remove node, it will manage the load balancer. It will do the, not, uh, the translation if you need to connect in, to connect in each node. Uh, this is the advantage of the scale set. When we will deploy this architecture, there is an Azure Key Vault that I use to store secrets. So this is a real use case because this is what we did for the, the Alliance. So in the Key Vault, we store the certificate. In this demonstration, we, I will deploy uh, uh, Nginx Plus. So we stored in the Key Vault the client certificate that we use to connect to Nginx for repo. So it can be taken as it is, and you can use it with the plus version. If you don't have the plus version, then you remove just this part of the script, and it will work uh, well as well. So this is why you have the Nginx Plus and module. And at the end of the day, we will target the Google APIs and the Azure Maps, which is also a brand new services uh, that can give you uh, loca services based on your location. It's quite the same as Google. So. Uh, I first made a presentation on Google. I said, oh, I think we have something like that in Microsoft as well. So let's add it. And it will be the purpose of a, a test I will show you. Everything is deployed in the West US region uh, today. So I call it WUS in my script. So, so that if you need to move uh, or deploy the architecture to front central, there will be FRC. And uh, you just need to, to update the variables. I had a discussion, I think, yeah, I think it was with you, Olive, about uh, using uh, the Nginx load balancer instead of this one. So this is a, another option you can have. I didn't show it today, but uh, we need to move out the virtual machine scale set. That is only possible with an Azure load balancer. Then we just push some virtual machine uh, classic one. So we could have two Nginx instances in the top with two public IP. And I put the, this thing, uh, wrong thing there, it's a tra traffic manager. So it's an Azure component that can uh, uh, help you uh, direct the traffic uh, to one instance or the other, or do some uh, A-B testing we're talking about. You can say, I want to have 90% on left and 10% on right. Uh, this is how it could be used. Um, do you know why we should put an Nginx proxy in front of a public API? <laughs> because some people yesterday told me, why are you doing that? No idea. 
one of our constraints was that the car was not able to connect to internet. They want really to know where the car is connecting. So what we did is that we take Nginx instances in this case. The, the car is reduced, uh, has reduced connectivity only to that trusted endpoint. And from here, we are able to manage the access to the third API, API services. So this is, I think, a good use case for, uh, for Nginx. And we will use, as you see, Azure Maps key inserted, and uh, we also insert the Google API key. Uh, this is a, a good uh, role for the Nginx server. We can manage centrally the credential we use instead of dispatching. When you have to turn the key, we don't need to dispatch. I mean, uh, we are talking about millions of cars across the world. So Good. So I'll uh, spend most of the time on a demo. So. The, the case is, your, please show me your photographer address and destination place. So if you have any question, don't hesitate to interrupt me. So I already deployed uh, one architecture, which is in West US, dev. Uh, and it's, up. it's coming there. It's moving to another screen, sorry. Yeah, demo is there. Maximize. Okay, got it. So I have sample requests here. It's insomnia, it's like Postman. It's roughly the same. Uh, then we have a request which is through Nginx. Uh, here we have the Google Street View. So if, if I press send, I already deployed one instance of Nginx with this configuration. So you can see that the target URL is uh, a name that I put in my uh, Azure DNS. It's targeting the WUS w, uh, environment. Dev, uh, this one is PRD, and the domain name I just bought, myapigetway.com. So I can switch to dev environment. I should have the same answer, yes. It show me the picture. I have some parameter. This is up to the Google API guide. You can find it in the guide. And if I try the Azure one, you see I have a 404 code. Basically, when I deployed the current instances, I said I do not want to enable this feature. So what Ansible did, we will see that. It just didn't play the, I need to apply the conf file in the directory. So when you reload, the file is not there. So what we have here is just the default server in Nginx. And when we try to reach the slash search, etc., there is nothing behind. So that's why we have an error. What we are gonna do right now is take the, the, the config file, I will go deeper just after. Here I have what I call feature flag file. Uh, I load the file uh, depending on the environment I am. So West US dev, it will be this one which is loaded. And you see that in my feature flag, I put Google is on and uh, Azure is off. So let's try to put just true on this one. We will save this. Okay, then you see that there is a change. I will commit that to my repository. Update on feature flag. Are there many users of uh, Visual Studio Code in the room now? Yeah. Good. And is it on Windows or Mac? Mac. Mac, yeah. I used to use uh, Visual Studio, you know, the, the big one. And <laughs> this one is working quite well. And then I need to push my change. So it will go to my repository on the cloud. And we will see uh, at the end of the session if it works or not. Saying that, I need to show you now so the VS code. I have some artifact there. The logic behind that is that I'm going to automate this configuration. So just if we look at the Azure Maps, it's uh, quite simple uh, stuff. I have a server listening on port 80. You can see that I am using uh, some brackets there. It's uh, because of the Ansible Jinja 2 templating stuff. So if you use Ansible, you know that you can have files, put variable in them, and then you say, hey, run down my file, and then it will replace with the correct name. So the idea is for server name is that if we deploy WS dev, the endpoint will be something like Azure Maps Nginx 2019.ws.dev and my domain name. So this is why it's viable. If you deploy it to friends, it will be also. And we proxy pass the search POI using get method to a Microsoft backend. And 
something interesting is that I was showing you that we insert the API key. Then uh, we just take all the arguments in the URL and we append the, the authorization key. This way, we don't have to keep it in the car. So if you need to update it, it's straightforward. Access log classic, Google map is the same. We just have a different variable for the endpoint. The backend will be Google and the key, uh, it's a different syntax for Google, but that's it. So the idea is that when we are going to do the automation, we will play first the resource group. It's basic script. I won't put any uh, emphasis on that. We just create a new resource group. In Azure, you put all your resources in the resource group. So we first create those. In the base, uh, I put, so the base will also create some resources. It's the key vault we saw in the schema to store all the credentials and the log analytic workspace. So I have one per environment. So uh, you can have a strategy of only one uh, over the world and you can also localize it. So you have, when you have one in Xenix instances, you also have the workspace that goes with it. We deploy the DNS stuff. There is another script. Uh, DNS is, uh, if you need to add a virtual host, you need to create the CNAME in the DNS. So we did it programmatically as well. And deploy Nginx is going to be the core of the solution. So every time there is a PowerShell, it will call a template. I know that some of you are familiar with uh, Azure template. Basically, if you look, it's a JSON file where you have the resources here. Uh, VNet, this is the first thing we deploy to have the, en the Nginx inside. Network security group is going to be the firewall. We just allow a port 80 to enter for the, for the demo and also some uh, SSH stuff if we need to connect. You have the public IP and the load balancer that comes with it. And at the end, uh, the VMSS where you have uh, some properties like the OS profile you want, if you connect using SSH key, uh, you have the network interface, which is linked to the firewall here. And at the end, once the PowerShell run, you have the template that deploy the resources. Then at the end of the deployment of the virtual machine, we decided to add an extension here, which we call uh, uh, custom script extension. And this one basically, is going to download the artifact we have. So when I talk about artifact, is the Ansible playbook with all the action to install Nginx, uh, uh, tune uh, SE Linux stuff, uh, deploy the configuration file, reload Nginx. So this is the heart uh, of the solution. So uh, there are different steps. All the code I have there, I'll put it just before on GitHub so you will have access to it. Uh, so basically, this is what we are doing. Uh, an interesting part is how we install the, the key for Nginx here. So we are dealing with a private key and, and a public key. And when you deploy in the template, you say, hey, this virtual machine needs to have access to the client certificate of Nginx. And then the VM will connect through the Azure platform to the key vault, retrieve the certificate, and put it on the disk. Then you will have the private key and the public key and you can handle it uh, your way. So this way we use it to connect to Nginx repository here. We specify the key and that's ready to go. After that, one other interesting step is here. This is where we deploy, let me check. Yeah, feature flag, uh, Wait, here it is the interesting part. So we have one rendering for the Google configuration file. And there is another one for Azure Map. And you can see that we do that only if the feature Google Map is true or if the Azure Map is true here. So on the previous deployment I made, Azure Map was false. So we just didn't execute it these steps. So the comp file is not in Nginx, then uh, there is no virtual host defined. Turning this to true, as I did just before, uh, we'll make the server deploy this configuration file and after we just reload. In the misc conf, I have put some specific log format. So we will be able to find in log analytic the colon we need. Uh, and after, this is just testing the configuration and reload. The TD agent is an open source uh, module, which is, a, it's not module, I should say, because it's not part of Nginx, but it's uh, open source free on D. You know, it's an agent that is used to deal with incoming flow uh, modify it and push it somewhere. So this will attach to the access log file of Nginx. And each time you have a new line, then it will be pushed to log analytic uh, through a specific connector. 
In the presentation, you have the link because it's a guy from Microsoft that made this plugin for uh, FreeOnD. And it's all about taking data and push uh, to log analytics. There is an API called uh, HTTP uh, Data Collector API. And you can push in log analytics whatever you want as soon as it, as it is a JSON file. So it's good to have uh, a specific format for uh, Nginx. Uh, let me check here. I put in MISC. You see, I have a log format directive. And I put some interesting information, the timestamp, the host name, etc., etc. If you are doing mutual authentication, you can grab the certificate C name so you can authenticate with the, the client in front of you. And this can be logged as well so you can see all the transactions made by one specific client if you do mutual auth. Or it can be with the remote address, but uh, this one is fine. Okay, uh, I think you have everything about the, the artifacts. And yeah, the bridge between Azure infrastructure and inside the VM, I, I talked about the custom script extension. It will download all the file you need, so it's YAML file, etc. And we will then run the install proxy with some parameter. This, this is just batch under Linux, so you can see that we are passing the URL for the Google Street View endpoint. It's the parameter number 13. And then after that, we install the Ansible client. So perhaps you will not do that in the real world because you will have a private repository because you cannot rely on internet when you deploy stuff. But for the, the ease of the demo, I did it from the internet. Then you install Ansible and you run your playbook uh, passing through some extra variables. So you can send, this is how you communicate between the platform Azure and, and inside the virtual machine. And then the YAML file kicked off and, and and that's fine. This is the logic behind. So if I go to see some material there, here is the Azure DevOps portal. So you have a bunch of stuff. The board and work item is where you manage your project. So I created a new one, which is Nginx. And you have to feel like you are a developer guy. And there is a new feature that is coming. And uh, I said, uh, as an Nginx Secure API gateway, I need to give access to Azure Map. OK. And from this, so the user is giving you all the information, the, the server name you should use, what is the backend, some sample, and what is the expected result. And then from here, uh, there are some new tasks I created for the developer. There is one which is, uh, I need to create the new virtual host. And directly from here, you can create a new branch in, uh, in Git and do your development. There is another one which is uh, add the, the Azure map skin, the key vault, OK? All the things that I shown you in, uh, in the Visual Studio code, it's the Git repository. So when you create a DevOps project, you have access to a Git repository. It can be also TFS. Uh, and this is where we store uh, all the files. So if I look at uh, Nginx, the feature flag dev, uh, I've just pushed the modification. So both are on the true, everything is enabled. So now that this is in the cloud, in a specific repository, we are able to make a build. The build will help you grab all the files that needs to be packaged and then pushed to the virtual machine. So I think we should have one update on FF. This is the last one I've just made. So uh, when you configure the build here, you can have the possibility to say, I want to do continuous integration. OK, so the trigger is here. So every time there is a commit, then uh, I, uh, I make a new build. And in the build, I say, please take from the Git repository Nginx, the branch ongoing, take all the file, and then copy them to a specific package that will be available. Now that this is done, if you look at the releases, I have a bunch of releases there. There is one which is uh, 342. The, we are 50. Uh, 51 now. So this is the last one that was spin up. If I look again in the release, you can. this is where you can specify multiple environments. So I have a dev one in West US, but I can easily add the French one. And if you look at the task inside, it is task group. And if I look inside the task group, it's basically what I already shown you. So we call the create resource group uh, PowerShell script with some parameters. So it's going to be the friendly location is WS. Location is West US 2 for uh, the data center and, uh, and the environment. So we create the resource group, the DNS stuff, the base, which is all the key vault and log analytic, the Nginx resources. And at the end of the release, 
I added one script that I didn't show you, but it's doing basically a invoke web request method uh, using PowerShell to test the endpoint. So it takes all the information from the variable we built and it will issue uh, 200 uh, and see if we have a 200 response. So wow, the, the last release seems to be fine. So if I look here at my console, uh, let's check if Google is still working. Yeah, that's fine. I'm on the dev environment. And if I look at the Azure map now, if I click send, wow, it's working. So this was a picture of a uh, Claire Obscure photo and I am able to find it uh, using the POI search from, uh, I was looking for name, yeah. The POI search from Azure map. So you can see that we are targeting the same Nginx instances. We are just playing with CNAME in the DNS, virtual host, and then it dispatch. And also, most important, if you try to make a direct access to Azure map, my laptop doesn't have the, the access key, so the normal behavior should be forbidden. But as soon as I go through the Nginx here, I have the answer because Nginx inserted on the fly the key to access that. We already had also a, a really interesting use case. I don't know if some of you already use the Google API. If you use the picture stuff, like I do, if you are doing many, many connections, you need to have the API key and also the, you need to sign the URL. So it means that when the request come in Nginx, there is a specific URL with the position so it can change for every car it's different. And then you need to take that and sign it with a private secret that Google give you. So it means in the key vault, you have the API key, you have the secret that you use for signature. And when you catch the request, then you need to sign it before sending it to Google. So Nginx is doing quite well and it's an high performance stuff. And for that, we use the engine script, which I think now it's NGS. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it, this is great stuff. And I think uh, I didn't put the code there, but if you ask me, I can share with you because it's nothing confidential. And it's uh, uh, when we add this use case because the customer is adding new feature constantly. So we try to answer with Nginx. And one time he said, I need to have this uh, picture. And I said, how am I going to do it on the server side? Because I'm not a developer. Uh, I'm mostly on the infrastructure part. And Nginx, we doesn't develop it, we configure it. But using NGS, uh, we were able to, to supply this need. So this is a, a great use case as well. Where I am in the demo. Okay, so now, now that is uh, deployed, I can easily say go to PRD. You see that it's still stuck. But now that it's validated on the dev, I can say approve, and then it will continue and move on and deploy the, the PRD uh, uh, architecture as well. So you can really create a huge flow like that. Uh, for the Alliance, we have eight continent, eight countries. Uh, we have about 10 environments per country, so you can see it's, it's a huge tree. And uh, we are doing development by sprint of two weeks. So it means that every two weeks we deploy everything. So it's really important to have item potent stuff, and Nginx is great at that because the idea is that you clear your folder with the config file and you render the new one and then you reload. And just before reloading, you just make an Nginx minus T to be sure that it's okay. And if it's not okay, you fire an alert, but you still have all in memory, it keeps running. So this is, I think, why Nginx is a good candidate for the, for the DevOps stuff. And let's say the, in French, we say la cerise on, sur le gâteau, c'est, you know, something on the cakes. I don't remember this one. <laughs> yeah. So you see the DevOps portal. You have access to DevOps portal. There is trial stuff. Uh, for the Azure, you can also have, in some case, some free credit. So these are the, the resources. Here you have my DNS zone. So basically, I bought the domain name. I said to my uh, registrar, these are the domain uh, server. And then using my template, I dynamically created all the CNAME here that points to the virtual machine, the, my public IP of the load balancer. So it's always the same whether it is Azure Map or uh, Google Maps, in fact. And we have the same record for production here. What can I show you? Uh, I still have a minute. And all the resources, but this is more Azure stuff, so we don't care. You have the load balancer, mm -hmm. the firewall, and this is what has been deployed using the template. Okay, the last one I want to show you is that we configure everything to be uh, trapped to log analytics using the FluentD agent. So, here is a sample of a request. 
let's see if it's already there in the dev environment in the last 30 minutes yeah this is utc time so i think this is probably if you look at the user agent at the end you see windows powershell i think this is the test this is that is done at the end of the release because you saw that at the end of the release when it's okay up there we go on dev logs the last one is test http response code and you see that azure map is enabled then we tested the url and it was 200 response code then that's fine this is what we have here so this is a good sample of uh, how you can concentrate the log of all your nginx instances so fluentd needs some tuning because if you go at scale you need to spin up more workers so there is a bit of tuning to do that there but as soon as you have your log format directive which is ready with all the things you need then in log analytics you can make some metrics and make some query what is the average response time based on my host name and because i also log here the you see if it's google or azure map so and that's it and after that you can use power bi or stuff like that to to make a dashboard and that's what we did for the alliance we have a, a dashboard that shows how many bad requests we have like four or five hundred codes how many 200 code we have etc so so i'm at the end of the presentation so i don't know i think i don't have any more slides just the wrap up of the session and if you have any questions so session takeaway so it's like a robust gateway for multiple APIs. This is good use case. You can do everything, whether it is infrastructure or configuration as code. You can track all the change because when I update the feature flag, I had to commit it on the repository. So you can have all the history, uh, do some rollback and DevOps as a project and risk management solution. Thanks. So I don't know if you have any questions. I put all the link in the presentation, stuff I talked about. Uh, the plugin uh, is from a guy from Microsoft. It's a, a TSP guy in Japan, and uh, he was the one that created the plugin for 3 on D. And everything I shown you is just in the Git repository. Uh, so feel free to contact me, I'll be there as well. And I don't know if there is any question. Questions? Feedback or... Uh, yeah, really. Uh, well, uh, really quick question on the uh, the architecture on uh, the identity of the car. It looked like uh, you depicted that Nginx was actually running in the car. Is that accurate? No. To do the mutual TLS work? No, no. In the car, you have one certificate, like a client certificate, and you do mutual authentication on Nginx here. Uh, okay, so some other device essentially managing traffic going up into your different endpoints in the cloud to to bring back traffic with some identity, like a mutual TLS certificate per car. Yes, yes. So there, there is provision stuff in the car that is done by the manufacturer, and then uh, on the server side, we have we are exposing some certificate that also come from the car manufacturer, and this is the way it works. It's like a PKI system, yeah. classic one. Yeah. Any other question or? Any feedback on the presentation? <laughs> now, this might not be something that happens all that often, but in your setup where you were working with the uh, Azure variables and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, the Nginx repo was statically typed towards the CentOS version. So Sorry, that, you catch it? Static? Uh, uh, you had statically typed the repo address for yes. the Nginx repo. Yeah. Uh, could that perhaps also be variable based? So it changes automatically with deployment yes, operating of system. Course. Yeah, yeah. It cool. can be changes. It's in the PowerShell logic. So I, I choose to have PowerShell, mm. but you can set it up as part of the template. You see all the template. Uh, there are a bunch of variables, and you can create whatever variable you want. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You just need to, re to create a new one. Uh, it can be also grabbed dynamically by PowerShell because everything, when you deploy the stuff, it's running on an agent that is in Azure, mm -hmm. somewhere at Microsoft. And this is just a virtual machine. So for that purpose with PowerShell, it's a Windows machine that has internet connectivity. So if you say first, I need to connect to uh, uh, an XML or JSON file at Nginx that give me the list of the repository, then I can deal with that. I have a great uh, a thing that we are doing mutual authentication and also IP filtering for some resources connecting to Nginx. And this IP are constantly moving. So what we do, we run the release, we just 
first call an API in uh, somewhere in Azure to retrieve a list of IP. And then we push that as an array in the PowerShell. And uh, we can, you can use it as a, it can be an access list in, in Nginx after that. It can mm. be, yeah, Excellent. this is how I would do. Excellent. Thanks so yeah. much. Thanks, guys, for coming.